Hey guys, I'm AJ and this is Modern Guitars. Today I'll be talking about the GT1000, the flagship boss effects unit. And I'll be showing you, 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 you how to dial in tones using the four cable method and your favorite valve amplifier. Recently, I purchased a GT1000 to enable me to cut down the weight of my oversized pedal board. The GT1000 is an extremely powerful unit. Not only does it contain most of the stomp boxes you could ever need, it also features cutting edge AIRD technology, which emulates a handful of amplifiers, speaker cabinets, and miking techniques. While this is great for most GT1000 users, what happens if you're old school like me and you have a favorite valve or tube amp that you gig and jam with and you just want to use it as a huge collection of stomp boxes in a tiny space? If this sounds like something you want to do, well, this video is for you. As far as I can tell, there are three main categories of GT1000 users. Category one are those that use the GT1000 without an amplifier in a live or in a studio situation. Boss's AIRD technology is at a point where we can get decent tones in a live or a studio situation without the traditional amp and speaker cabinet setup. Category two are those that use the GT1000 with an amplifier, but they're using the amplifier as a pedal platform. What I mean by that is they use an amplifier on a clean channel and they plug the guitar directly into the GT1000 and then the GT1000 directly into the front of the amp before the preamp. Category three are those who want to use the GT1000 as an amazing collection of pedals to be used at any point in the signal chain. These users may also utilize more than one channel on their amplifier. Now, there might be some crossover between these three categories, especially number two and number three. But with number three, this is where the four cable method comes in. The four cable method or 4CM is a technique you can use to essentially wire in your amplifier's preamp into the GT1000 signal chain. Once you're all four cabled up, you can use the Boss GT1000 or the Boss Tone Studio to design your signal path from guitar output to power amp. Knowing which cable goes where can feel a little counterintuitive. So I've made a diagram to help you understand what's happening, which once you get your head around, should make wiring it up yourself a little bit easier. Referring to this diagram, let's first start with the amplifier. As you probably know, your amplifier has two main sections, a preamp, and a power amp. A preamp is pretty much what creates your tone. And the power amp is what makes everything loud and drive the speakers. Most amplifiers also have what's called an effects loop or a send and return. This loop sits in between the preamp and the power amp. The reason for this loop is that some effects sound better when sitting in front of the preamp and others sound better after the preamp. There really isn't a right and wrong answer for what effects should go before and after the preamp. It's down to personal choice and what you're really trying to achieve. Now let's look at the GT1000. Let's think of the GT1000 in a similar fashion to the amplifier in that it has different sections with a send and return in between. One section being before the preamp and the other section after the preamp. Keeping this in mind, let's follow the signal path starting at the guitar. One, the signal is sent out of the guitar and into the GT1000 into the effects that you want before the preamp. Two, the signal is then sent to the guitar amplifier preamp, which is the amplifier's main input. Three, the signal goes through the preamp and on the other side, sent out of the effects loop into the effects that you want after the preamp. Four, the signal is then routed back from the post preamp effects into the return of the amplifier's send and return. It is then sent to the power amp for amplification. In summary, you make your connections like this. One, guitar goes into the GT1000 main input. Two, then connect the send one out of the GT1000 into the amplifier's main input. Three, connect the send of your amplifier's effects loop into the return one of the GT1000. Four, connect the main output or mono L of the GT1000 into the return of your guitar amplifier's effects loop. Once you're all set up, it might be helpful to color code your cables and your plugs as I have done. This takes out any guesswork and makes setup a whole lot easier, especially if you're setting up in a time pressured situation, on a stage, in the dark, or in a rehearsal room. Now, one of the reasons why you might want to use the four cable method is that you're using a valve amp and that is a huge part of your tone. If you're anything like me, your preferred setup will utilize multiple channels on your amplifier. 
For example, a clean channel, a rhythm channel, and a lead channel. And you can still use them. What makes the GT1000 even more powerful is that you can switch to any of your guitar amplifier channels simply by activating a patch. To do this, you'll need a TRS stereo to dual mono cable. Plug the stereo end into the amp control plug on the GT1000, and then each mono jack to the respective channel footswitch plug on your guitar amplifier. On the three channel dual rectifier that I'm using in this demo, right or red is channel two, and white or left is channel three. With cables going to channel two and channel three, we're actually able to switch to all three channels. In this video, I'll be using the Boss Tone Studio on a Mac. Boss Tone Studio is also available for PC, Android, and iPhone. I chose to use the desktop version of the software as it is a little more intuitive at first than using the phone version or the GT1000 itself to dial in tones. Something that I ran into that wasn't super clear was after downloading the driver and the Tone Studio, when I connected the USB cable, Tone Studio said that it was too old and needed to be updated. And this was confusing because I'd downloaded the most up-to-date version of the driver and the software. What they were actually referring to is the firmware of the GT1000. I just thought I'd mention this because others might find this confusing too, as the error message doesn't explicitly say what needs updating. And the BOSS website doesn't use terminology like firmware, they use software instead. Okay, so once you've downloaded the software, the drivers, and the firmware, just ensure that your GT1000 firmware is up to date. As I mentioned earlier, you might get an error message if the GT1000 firmware is too old for the Tone Studio version you're currently running. So once it's installed, launch Tone Studio and select the GT1000 as the device from this window here. With time, you will familiarize yourself with the Tone Studio user interface. However, I will now quickly just run over the key areas that we'll be using in this video. On the left here, you will see a list of user, preset, and pedal board patches on your GT1000. Just make sure that you're on the user tab here. Up the top here, you will see the main menu. And now this will take you to the different components of the Tone Studio software, for example, the library or the tuner. Etc. But for now, all we're really interested in is the editor. When editor is selected, the top portion of the screen is a visual representation of the signal path for the currently selected patch over there on the left hand side. So if I select a patch over here, you'll see that once it draws the information from my GT1000, it will adjust the signal path. See? Okay, so we've got the old man rock 4CM and we've got heavy 4CM. So yeah, you just select the patch here on the left-hand side and it will show the signal path for that patch in the top portion of the window. Keep in mind that it can be a little bit slow drawing the information out of the GT1000 via USB. The bottom section of the screen on the editor tab is the settings for the currently selected effect. And you select effects by simply clicking the blocks up in the top portion of the screen. The last section I want to talk about is the CTL EXP button up the top here. Clicking that will present you with a menu which will allow you to control the behaviors of the GT1000 on that specific patch. For example, defining what happens when you hit specific pedals on the pedal board, or assigning properties to external foot switches or expression pedals, etc. Okay, let's start dialing in some tones. A good place to start is by thinking about what you really want to achieve first. So in this first patch that I want to create, I want a clean patch with a little bit of delay and a little bit of reverb. And when I hit control pedal one, I want it to add a chorus. And when I hit control pedal two, I want it to add a tremolo. So let's just start with a user patch that we're comfortable with overriding. Country twang, I think we can get rid of that safely. And go up here on the top right and just hit clear. Hit OK. You might have heard my amp go nuts there. That's because I've got the control pedal cables plugged in. Okay, so it gives us a generic patch. So every, every time you initialize a new patch, it's gonna come up with these settings. So we can just safely go and just turn these off. Okay, so to just give you a little sample for what the guitar sounds like with nothing added in a four cable method. <laughs> Just a nice clean tone. Now let's think about what I wanted to achieve. So I wanted to achieve a clean patch with a little bit of delay and a little bit of reverb. 
but I also want to be able to tap the tempo of my delay. So let's start off with our delay. So we can use, if we're only having one delay, I can, might use the master delay because it has more options. I'm gonna bring that, I'm gonna bring that over here. So currently the master delay is sitting in my signal chain, which is great, it's deactivated. But now let's think about this like a standard pedal board. I want the master delay to sit in the send and return of the amplifier, meaning that I need to have this after the send and return block. My send and return block one is here. So I'm gonna move this down here and I'm also gonna activate it. Loud. As we can hear, that's introduced quite a lot of noise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to master, which is at the end of the signal chain. And I realize that I am currently on my lead channel. So to change the channel of your amplifier, just flick these amp control buttons. So now with both of these on, my amp is in the clean mode or the clean channel. Let's move back to the delay. So now that I've got my send and return in this block here, I can now activate my master delay. And let's hear what that sounds like. Great. I also want to use a tap tempo. So setting it to a fixed time is no good. So if we just go ahead and adjust this time value, so that it can use the master BPM. Okay, here we go. Let's hear what that sounds like. Too slow. Half note dotted. Triplet. Half note, quarter note dotted. too much so I'm just gonna dial the feedback down a little and I might adjust the effect level too quite like that. So let's save these settings. So to save, let's go right up here in the top, hit right, and we wanted to write it over, what was it, country twang? Country twang was 2-4. So if we just go to 2-4, and I'm gonna call it um, new delay, and I'm gonna call it new delay 4CM. Right, okay, so now that puts that in that section where country twang was. Give it a moment to write. Okay, now I wanted a tap tempo and I want tap tempo to happen on control three, which is my tuner currently. So I've gone into the CTL EXP and I can just jump into or scroll through here until I find the one I'm looking for. Master delay trigger, no. Uh, absent minorly gone past it. Now oh, here we go. BPM tap. Okay, so now I have set the control three to be a BPM tap instead of the tuner. Okay, we'll close that for now. What else did I want? I also wanted a little bit of reverb and I wanted that on all of the, all modes of that patch. So on the control one, control two, and also with none of the controls actually selected. So let's just go ahead and, and change that now. So I'll add a reverb. Currently it's on hall two. <laughs> That's okay. Hall one. Okay, that's all right. Let's adjust the effects level. Too much. I think 
that sounds good. Okay, I like the sound of that. Okay, I also wanted to add a chorus on Control Foot Switch 2. So let's just find where the chorus is. There it is. And I want the chorus to be before the delay. Let's just see what that sounds like now. I'm not running a stereo rig, so let's just change that to mono. That already sounds great. be a little too much though I might just dial that down a little bit let's hear it with and without it's without now we've turned it on okay I like the sound of that let's just jump into the CTL EXP and we want to assign that to control one so at the moment with its control one is assigned to a divider. So that is this thing here, this little, um, this little loop here. But we don't want that. We want to assign control one to the chorus. So jump back into CTL EXP and let's change this to the chorus. Here we go, close. Okay, so because my chorus is activated, if I write this now, it's going to mean that when I activate this patch, Chorus will be activated. And you'll see the control light on the GT1000 activated when you change to this patch. I don't want that. So I'll just turn that off and then I'll write that. And we're gonna write it to new delay 4CM, right. Control two is activated because I think I'm looking at my pedal board now. Control two is activated and it's white. So I'm assuming that control two initially was M delay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to jump back into CTL EXP and I wanted to add a tremolo for my control two, but the tremolo isn't just by itself. Tremolo is in FX. So I'll just close that now. So if I hit control two now, there you go, FX. So I'm actually hitting that on the pedal board and you can see that it, light, it lights up on the uh, Tone Studio software. I'll just do that again. Okay, so let's just jump into FX1. Now, do I want the tremolo before or after the effects loop? Let's just see how it sounds. Okay, so that's a phaser. Uh, Tremolo. I quite like the rate of that. I don't know if I want this on my tap tempo, so I'm gonna leave it at rate 85. I quite like a deep tremolo though. much so I might turn the effect down a little So the direct mix is sending both wet and dry, and it's just the percentage of what's wet and what's dry. Yep, 
that sounds good. Now let's hear it after the effects loop. So this is currently sitting in front of the effects loop before the preamp. Now if I move it over here, I've moved it into the effects loop. <laughs> I actually like it sitting before. Sounds sounds better to me. that before the effects loop. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that off and just check that I've made sure that yep, FX1 is control 2. Okay, so let's write that. I'm going to write that to the same patch. <laughs> Okay, so in summary, we have a clean patch and it's on my clean channel because I've got these amp controls on over on master. And uh, I've got an effects loop, which is this up and down arrow here. And inside the effects loop, I've got the... So anything inside the effects loop is after that effects loop. So the GT1000 also has a, a second effects loop, which I have another pedal into. You can use that at any point as well. So you can use two effects loops. So if you want anything after the effects loop, it needs to be after this one here, even if it's on a different divider. I'll just put the neck pickup on. one, turn my chorus on. Okay, I'll hit control two. Also, just test the control three pedal. It's currently flashing, as you can probably see in the video. Uh, it's currently on 120 BPM. I'll just jump to the delay. So we can see 120 BPM over here. And I'll just start tapping on the control three pedal and I'll see if the tempo changes. Yeah, that's a little bit fast. All right, there you go. So that's the first patch, the nice clean patch, and let's move on. Okay, so the next tone that I want to create is a vintage retro rock sounding overdrive. 
The way that they used to achieve this was by pushing the preamp tubes on a clean amp by sending the amplifier an inflated signal that causes clipping. Using a treble boost or an overdrive pedal to ramp up the input signal, it hits your preamp tubes harder and creates a nice valve overdrive sound. On this patch, I also want to have a touch of reverb, perhaps something that's true to that error. This time on control pedal one, I wanted to activate a phaser. On control pedal two, I want it to be for solos on this patch. So perhaps pushing the preamp even harder and also adding some delay. Also, I want to be able to activate a wah, whether or not control one or control two is active. Okay, so we'll just start again by selecting a patch that we're okay overwriting. So I downloaded some of Ola England's four cable method patches, uh, but I'm okay overwriting those. It's not that they're bad, it's just that I don't need them anymore. All right, again, so we'll go up to write and we'll hit clear and it's gonna give us that prompt, we hit okay. You'll hear my amp going crazy again, it's just flicked over to the lead channel. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna change back to the clean channel because this particular patch, I want the overdrive to be very subtle. I want it to be that vintage rock sound. I won't be using my rhythm or my lead channel, so I will just flick back to the, ooh, I'll just flick back to the clean channel. Okay, and uh, I'll just turn that off for now, the reverb. I'll just go and turn all these blocks off so that we can start. All right, so the first thing in the signal chain, something that's not gonna go away is the distortion or the overdrive. And so all the distortions, overdrives, fuzzes, all that sort of thing, they're in these DS1 and DS2 blocks. So I'll just drag that right up the front. I'm gonna put it after my wah because I'm eventually going to want that in my, in my patch. But think about it like a pedal board. I always have my wah as the very first thing in the signal chain, followed by my distortions and compressions and all that sort of thing. So I'll just leave that there for now. But before we continue, I want to focus on this, the send and return. So I'm gonna actually put that back here and I'm gonna activate it. Let's hear what the clean sounds like. All right, now let's activate our distortion. So keep in mind, this is a clean amp and I'm just activating it as if I put a stomp box in front of my amplifier. And the stomp box is this one here, XOD, and it's these are the settings for it. Might be a bit much. I think this is part of the AIRD technology, this one here, and, and these ones here. So I'm gonna think about what they used to use back in those days. So they had tube screamers, they had you know the rat pedal, um, they had uh, centaurs, treble boosts. So I'm gonna start with a treble boost and just hear what that sounds like. A little bit thin, it's a little bit shrill in the high end, but I guess it is a treble boost, so that's kind of the nature of it. Anyway, I think this one is a little bit too thin, so I might try something else. What about a clean boost? More in the ballpark of what I want, but I think still it might be, we're already pushing this at 94%, so. Okay, if I compare that to the XOD that we had on before, I like the other one better. That's introduced quite a lot of noise. Let's try something else though. Um, natural overdrive. Draw that, draw that back a bit. It's a bit loud. Warm overdrive. Actually, that sounds like the one I want. Yep, so I'm switching these on and off to see if it um, 
increase the volume uh, or not. So obviously I don't really want it to increase the volume. I just want, I don't want it to be a hell of a lot louder than any of my other patches. So uh, that's good. Maybe just a little bit more drive. <laughs> I think that sounds good already. Must be the dual rectifier. All right, so next we wanted to add a little bit of reverb. So, and it's just a touch of reverb and perhaps something that is error specific. So the reverb was over here, turn that on. And because it is after the send and return, that means it's in the amplifier send and return, which is good. Um, reverb will turn that on this time. I think we'll go away from one of these digital ones like hall. I think plate is, uh, or spring is something more true to that error. <laughs> I only want a touch of it, I don't want much. Yep, I think that's pretty good, but I'll try another one anyway. So plate sounds good, spring I'll try, because uh, that's also pretty error specific. I'll just see what that sounds like with the effect turned up. That's, that's pretty retro, but I'll just turn it down a bit. I think I liked the other one better, plate. It might be a little bit much. So not too much reverb, just a touch. Maybe even a little less. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Now, another thing that I'm noticing is that there's quite a lot of noise. So I'm gonna use a noise gate. I'll try it after my distortion. Usually you, you want these kind of things in the very last thing before it goes to the front of the amp, but I can't think that we're gonna have anything else up this end. So the trick to dialing these in is have the threshold at zero and then have your guitar making no sound out, but don't, don't turn the volume down or anything, but leave the sound on and just kind of mute the strings and then just keep turning it up until the sound stops. Sounds okay. You don't want it to also choke your note before it finishes sustaining. Maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Let's just hear how long the sustains. It's probably gonna go on forever. Maybe I'll just adjust with the volume control. Yeah, okay, that's good. It doesn't choke anything, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so what's the next thing we wanted to do? So we've got our distortion, we've got our reverb. The next thing I wanted to do was, okay, so for control one, I wanted to activate a phaser. So because I'm thinking in advance here, but if because in my control two, I wanted to have multiple effects, um, which were some delay, uh, and I wanted to hit the, the amp a bit harder, I might use this divider here and then set that to control two which will be my lead, because that way I can add multiple effects at once. So at the moment, I think control one is this divider. If I'll just, I'll just hit the control one. Oh yeah. So as you can see, after I hit the control one, it's, it flicked it over. But I wanna assign that to control two, because the first thing I wanna do is just activate a phaser. And phaser is in FX. I'll try it before the preamp and I'll try it after the preamp and see how we go. So this is currently before the preamp phaser. I like a nice deep phaser. And I like it slow. I don't like it. I don't want it to be assigned to the BPM. I just kind of want it like 
flowing in and out. That already sounds good. I like that. Well, that was easy. <laughs> um, but I'm going to... Oh, actually, I'll just try it again after the preamp. I actually quite like it after the preamp in the amplifier send and return. So that's great. I'm going to go into my CTL EXP and then assign that to control pedal one. That was FX, uh, FX one. Good. We're done. I might write this one or save this just in case anything goes wrong and u2-3 that's great and i'm going to call it what, what should i call it I'll, I'll just call this um vintage rock 4cm right in the previous one i mentioned that if something is activated when you write that means that when you next go onto that patch the effect will be on as we can see this one's lit up so now if i change away and change back this will be on uh, again, I don't want that. I only want that when I hit the control one pedal. So I'm going to need to write this again. But all you need to do to fix that is just turn it off uh, and then write and just do the same thing. All right, so now let's focus on control two. So control two is going to be for solos and I may or may not want the wire pedal. But when I change to that, control two i don't want the wire activated i want to be able to do that manually you can just do that by holding your foot down on the toe side of the expression pedal that turns it on as long as it's yep yeah, selected here wire cry wire that's exactly what i want so now let's focus on this divider here so first of all i'm going to assign control two to the divider divider Okay, so now we've set control two to divider and I can add in all the things that I wanna add in. So I wanna push it a little further. So I might put an EQ there as a boost and that's gonna be in the effects loop of my amplifier, but also I wanted to add some delay, et cetera. So I'll move the delay down into this little guy here. And the reason why it's in here, as I said, is when I hit control two, it's gonna flick down into this side and that's only gonna activate that when control two is active. Let's turn the delay on. I might want a tap tempo on this. So I'll assign that to my control three. First of all, activate. <laughs> yep, I like that. I like that delay time. It's set to 120 BPM currently, but I want to be able to tap so in order to do that, I'll go back into my CTL XP and then I will adjust this accordingly. So BPM tap, close. Sick. Okay, and I also want to add a boost. So I might do that with an EQ. So it's good to just A, B them. So, so make a change and, and listen to it. And if I turn it on. It even pushed it a semitone higher. I don't think I want much more in the low or the mids. I don't want it to get too nasally or too woofy. Uh, I just want it to be a little more or have a little more clarity around that sort of 4K area. Smooth it off. With it on. Yep, I think I think that sounds pretty good. So it's a little bit of a boost. And I also want that wah, and that's already set up. So I think we're done here. First of all, I'll just write that. So again, I'm just gonna stress that the important thing to getting a sound that's acceptable to you is 
thinking about this like a pedal board so where the effects go in what order do you want them in the signal chain and you're easily able to do that with this representation of the signal path up here in the top oh wait i wrote the patch and control 2 is active so i'll just change that back <laughs> that sums up the second patch that I want to create let's move on okay guys so this is going to be the last patch that we will create in this video I'm just conscious that the video is currently quite a bit longer than I had originally intended however I think I've given you an understanding of how to undertake most of the things that you will need to do to dial in your own tones with the four cable method so in this patch I really just want a ballsy rhythm tone that I'll use for drop tuning something that chugs so I'm not going to bother with the control one and control two pedal settings. I'm just interested in getting a nice heavy rhythm tone. The secret to a heavy rhythm tone is actually in your amplifier. What you want to do first is to set the gain on your rhythm channel so that the amplifier is already breaking up. Nothing too over the top because we will be enhancing it and pushing it even further with pedals. So let's just initialize a new patch. I'm using guitar pad 01 and that's on U2-5. So we'll just click right and hit clear as we did before. Hit OK. OK, so once we're initialized, we'll just go ahead and quickly turn these off. While I'm doing this, I'll just explain so we want our amplifier on channel two, which is the rhythm channel. And it sounds like this. Now it sounds pretty soft and pretty thin. One thing I didn't explain with the previous patches is that because we're using the four cable method, we need to have our send and return activated. And that's because we're actually bypassing our preamp without the send and return activated. So I'll just quickly adjust the gain on my amplifier because this is with nothing activated. Okay, so we've got a pretty decent tone already, but the overdrive is not oversaturated. It's just a little bit after the point where it starts to break up. All right, and the first thing we wanna do is focus on an overdrive. So I'm just gonna put that right up the front here and let's turn it on. Got quite a lot of noise here. Not a huge fan of the XOD or the X dist. That one's okay. I'll keep going though. I tried one before that I really liked, this one here. Yeah, I quite like it, but I'm going to dial that in a little bit further. Adjust the tone a little. Okay, quite like that. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so I might need a little bit of EQing that I can't really do on the distortion pedal. So I'll just add this one here, it's close by. This time I'll use a graphic equalizer just to show you. Okay, so it might be a little bit muddy in the low end, so I'll just... I'll just turn down a couple of these low frequencies here. Yep, it's a little better, a little better. Okay, and I think around here, maybe a thousand. Yep, 
It's a little better. And then up around that 4K area. It's a little bit too sensitive, these dials. I find that as you let go, it just increases by one. Let's just turn that off. Turn it back on. Very nice. Okay. And I think maybe around the 8K area. Okay, cool. Let's turn that down for a bit. Now, this is a little bit noisy, so I'm going to put it in a noise gate. I'm gonna try this in my effects loop. I don't wanna take anything away from my overdrive and my EQ, so I'll just try it here and see how it sounds. At the moment, the guitar is muted, but immediately you can hear that it's eliminated all the noise. So we'll just use the same method we used to dial it in before. So this is with nothing. This is just the amount of noise without it, quite a lot. Yep, okay, that's cool. Okay, and I wanna also, in my send and return, maybe boost it a little bit with an EQ. So I might just do that here. Just bring it down here, why not? Again, I'm going to use a graphic. We can drop quite a lot of these low frequencies because we're not really able to hear it. We don't want it to be too muddy. I'm grateful that I put that noise gate on. Okay, so maybe just remove a little bit from here. Yep, good. And then add it a bit around 1K. Again. Again, a bit, little bit more around 4K. Ooh. So you can actually double click on them as well. So we'll just start with one. Cool. Way too trebly. <laughs> I'm happy with just one. Cool. Maybe again around that 8K area. Sounds like a metal zone. Okay, I actually think that's pretty good. I don't think I'd add anything or take anything away. So I'll just show you without the EQ in the send return. Okay, so this is with it off. And then I'll also turn off the other EQ. So I'll turn on the EQ before the preamp. Now I'll turn on the one after. I'm actually really happy with that. 
So we're done with this patch. Just gonna write that one. I'll just call this balls. Okay guys, that wraps up the video. I hope that this video can help you dial in tones on your amplifier using the GT1000. My name's AJ, this is Modern Guitars, and thanks for watching.